Welcome to Storytime with Herbal Root Scene. I'm Christine Brown, and today I'm going to read to you a story that I wrote for Herbal Root Zine from issue number 21, Enlighten Me Echinacea. A beautiful plant that is often added to butterfly and pollinator gardens, Echinacea packs quite a medicinal punch. Most people know about Echinacea's stimulant actions especially relating to the immune system. Because of the stimulating action, he is great to take when you feel a cold coming on. Besides being an immune stimulant, Echinacea works on the body as an alternative, restoring the body's systems to their natural state. He, cl he cleanses the blood, helping the body to heal through this process. Echinacea is great to call on in times of acute and chronic illnesses, and it can be taken at the first sign of a cold, flu, sinus infection, and so on, to stop or reduce the length of the illness. That's just a few of the many things that echinacea can be used for. Today's story is The Gift of the Bear. Once there was a tribe of Lakota Sioux. They led a nomadic lifestyle, living in teepees and following the herd of bison that provided them with so much. Food, hides for clothing and shelter, sinew for string, horns for storing powdered medicine, teeth for decoration, and much more. Their dependency on the herds took them on a vast range of plains, which offered them many edible and medicinal plants as well. The tribe was content with this lifestyle and did not suffer from it. The tribe's medicine man was Watching Sapa, which means wise and clear-headed. Watching Sapa was getting older and realized that the time had come to start teaching a young child to follow in his footsteps. He went to his prayer rock to call on the Great Spirit. He fasted for several days and gave offerings of tobacco, wild grain seeds, flowers, and bison teeth. After seven days and nights, he returned to his tribe. That night, he had a vision of a bear. The same night, a boy named Mato also had a vision of a bear. He did not know what the vision meant, but thought nothing much of it since his name meant bear. He was sure it was his totem visiting him and nothing more. The next day, watching Sapa visited Mato's teepee and called his mother, Chimaka, to sit and speak with him. He asked if Mato had mentioned any visions or callings from the Great Spirit. Chimaka called Mato out and asked him. Mato told of his vision from the previous night and watching Sapa smiled. You have been chosen by the Great Spirit to become this tribe's next medicine man, Mato. You must go on a journey into the forest for seven days and seven nights, fasting, praying, and giving offerings to the Great Spirit. Afterwards, come to my teepee and tell me what you saw. Mato bowed in agreement and prepared for his journey. That night, he set off into the forest to find a spot to carry out his quest. The moon was full and guided him to a spot by the river where the water cascaded from the rocks above. He lay down to sleep and woke upon the rising of the morning sun. For seven days and nights he prayed to the Great Spirit, unsure of what he was looking for or why he had been chosen. No answers came in his dreams at night or prayers during the day. And then on the seventh night, he woke up to the sound of crashing through the underbrush. Mato sat up and gasped. Standing before him was a bear on his hind feet. Mato knew he should be fearful, but watched in awe as his totem dropped to all fours and walked towards him. He noticed the bear had a limp, but as the bear got closer, he realized it was holding something in its paw, which made it hard for the bear to walk. When the bear reached Mato, he stood up once again, opened his mouth and said, this root is from the purple cone flower. As a medicine man, you will use this to heal many. 
break off a piece of the root to plant back into the ground, and store the rest in your medicine pouch. This plant is your ally, as I am. With that, the bear dropped the root into Mato's outstretched hands, turned around, and disappeared back into the underbrush. Clutching the root, Mato rubbed his eyes and went back to sleep. The next morning, he walked back to the edge of the forest, broke off a piece of the root, and planted it. He went straight to Watching Sapa's teepee and told him of his vision. Watching Sapa smiled and told him to bring his bedroll. Mato stayed with Watching Sapa for several years, learning about medicine making and trying out the root of the purple coneflower whenever he had the chance to. He also harvested the flower, seeds, and leaves and used them as well. He found many uses for the plant, including treating snake bites, wounds, and sore throats. When it came time for Wanching Sapa to leave his earthly body, he did so knowing Mato would be caring for his people with skill, knowledge, and the ability to learn about new medicine when the opportunity arose. I hope you enjoyed today's story. If you'd like to learn more about Echinacea, you can find the Echinacea ebook in my shop. I'll put a link in the description. It's also a part of my year-long course, The Next Step, which features 13 herbs over the course of a year. It's a fun way to learn about the medicinal uses of herbs. Thanks for visiting Herbal Root Zine for story time, and I'll see you next time.